What is up guys? Welcome to our very first battle for the PCL, the Pokemon Champions League. This week we are up against Moxie and Fernape or Blake and his Baltimore Braviaries. And uh, let's go over Blake's team really quickly. We'll see what he has. He's got a team of Mega Gardevoir, Thunderous Incarnate, which is one of his Zemons, Terrakion, which is also a Zemon, Greninja, Delmise, Flygon, Steelix, Blastoise, Entei, Mesprit, and regular Lopunny. Yes, that's right. He has a full roster of 11 Pokemon, which is uh, more than we can say. We only have 10. But let's go over the, te the uh, team that we're bringing for him. As always, guys, I'm going to leave a uh, timestamp in the uh, description if you guys just want to check out the battle and you're not so much interested in the team builder itself. But uh, it's going to be really helpful for you to know what sets we're bringing. So here it is. We're going to start off. Uh, I kind of reordered the team in, uh, in terms of importance in some way. But uh, first off, we have Alolan Ninetales, uh, Choice Scarf. This is going to be the first time we're bringing Alolan Ninetales, Gym Leader Geo. You guys are going to see during the battle, the uh, Pokemon are actually not nicknamed because I had the battle before I uh, decided what to nickname each Pokemon. But uh, I'm going to leave them on here so you guys can familiar uh, familiarize yourself with my nicknames. But yeah, we have Choice Scarf, Alolan Ninetales, Snow Warning, of course. Uh, the only ability you want to be running on this thing, you don't want to run Snow Cloak. Uh, freeze Dry, Moon Blast, Blizzard, and Roar Veil. As you guys can see, he has a Thunderous Incarnate, a Terrakion, a Greninja, a Delmise, a Flygon, a Blastoise, all of which get hit for super effective damage by this Pokemon. Freeze Dry is able to hit the Blastoise as well as the Flygon, so, so is Bl uh, Blizzard. Uh, it's also able to hit the Flygon and the Delmise as well. Uh, Moonblast is able to hit the uh, Greninja and the th uh, the Terrakion for super effective damage. Blizzard is also there for the Thunderous Incarnate. Uh, I'm able to hit a lot of his team for a very good amount of damage. Blizzard also does a lot to Steelix if we want to bring that up. And I'm also rocking Aurora Veil on this set because it gives me very good team support against Blake's team. He's got very hard hitters in Mega Gardevoir, Thunderous Incarnate, Terrakion. I want to be able to check them to some extent. Uh, and having an Aurora Veil up on a forced switch uh, is always nice. I want to bring in my Lola Nine Tails as often as possible on his Blastoise. Blastoise is 100% coming to this match. There's no doubt in my mind. I have an Infernape. He needs a way to check it. Everything else on his team gets obliterated by Infernape. Uh, I have super effective coverage for everything I do for Blastoise as well, but I can't afford to run it. So uh, this is the Alola Nine Tails set. Like I said, I want to come in on Blastoise. That's going to be my primary target. It could run Flash Cannon, but I doubt it. It kind of needs support moves. Uh, to make sure that it has some su uh, survivability against me. So that's uh, Gym Leader Geo, the Alolan Ninetales. Next up, we have El Scizor, the Assault Vested Nihilego. Now, I can switch this thing in on Mega Gardevoir if I predict a Hyper Voice or a Focus Blast, because I do have the Assault Vest. But mainly, this thing is here for Thunderous Incarnate. I can also take a Water Shuriken from Greninja if I need to. I can take Scalds from Blastoise, don't really want to get burned, but... Uh, if it's an inevitability, then so be it. Um, Mesprit can hit me for super effective damage, but if it's not carrying Psy Shock, it's not going to hit me for that much. Uh, my EV spread is kind of something that I showed in the draft recap. Uh, it's a max speed variant with a uh, 176 special attack. Uh, I am able to knock out the uh, Thunderous with Power Gem, so long as it's not very bulky after rocks. Uh, Sludge Wave is able to knock out the Mega Gardevoir from about 84%, again, if it's not too bulk invested. Uh, Dazzling Gleam is there for the uh, Terrakion, as well as the Greninja and the Flygon. I can hit them all for super effective damage. And then I have Hidden Power Ice uh, as well for the Flygon in case I need a little bit of extra damage. It also hits the Delmise for super effective, uh, even though Sludge Wave technically does more because it's neutral. Not exactly sure why I ran Hidden Power Ice ultimately. I think I just needed a fourth move on here and it was the best thing I could think of because uh, I do outspeed Flygon and Dazzling Gleam doesn't kill from full. So... This is what I decided to bring. Uh, the speed boosting is so that if I get a kill, say on his Mega Gardevoir or his Thunderous, uh, some of his uh, faster mons than Nihilego can't necessarily come in and revenge me unless they're Choice Scarfed. Uh, and Choice Scarf Flygon won't outspeed this. Uh, the only things that will will be Choice Scarf Thunderous, which I take any hit from, uh, Choice Scarf Terrakion, or Choice Scarf Greninja. Uh, if Greninja is special, obviously I can take a hit from that as well. So this is the Nihilego set that I'm bringing. It's very, very volatile against him, and it's a great check to Thunderous. So I pretty much have to bring it because Thunderous is a huge threat, and I need my Registeel for something else. So 
Moving on, we have Pokemon the Milotic. Now, this is one of the more important sets against him. Uh, my EV spread is made to specifically take a max attack, uh, jolly close combat from a Terrakion if it's not banded, as well as a Continental Crush from full. I'm able to recover both off and... Uh, take them pretty well re realistically and then just uh, recover it off uh, I can't keep staying in on it I uh, technically eventually have to scald it uh, but uh, after a few close combat drops uh, scald will automatically kill mirror coat is there for the uh, mega guard of war Thund thunderous incarnate doesn't kill from full because of my special defense investment uh, greninja I can't hit with mirror coat unfortunately uh, but I can also hit things like the blastoise the Entei, if it's got solar beam with sunny day for some reason uh, and I can mirror coat the mesprit as well so that's why that's there I want to be able to kill mega gardevoir as quickly as possible for my win con which will be coming up I have toxic on here for his blastoise uh, as well as his mesprit to be able to weaken them his flygon because I'm not carrying ice beam uh, the delma is on a switch because it's the more likely switch into my Lodic. Uh, pretty much every time I can wear down pretty much his entire team. He doesn't have great uh, toxic switch-ins. His uh, steel type is a steelix, which doesn't take on Milotic uh, any day of the week unless it's like uh, sheer force, thunder fang, and gets set up. Uh, Shoutouts to Chimpact on that one. Uh, but yeah, so that's the Milotic set. It's pretty straightforward. It's able to wall a lot of his team. Moving on to our win con, the Haxorus, A Drive, Dragon Claw, Earthquake. Outrage and Dragon Dance. Now, this set completely destroys him with Rocks Up. I have 96 attack with a with an adamant nature, 120 speed, 44 special defense, and 248 HP. Uh, the reason I'm running such a bulky Haxorus is because I can take a hit from pretty much anything on his team that isn't named Mega Gardevoir. Uh, I can take a close combat from Terrakion, I can take an HP Ice from Thunderous, I can take a... Um, an ice beam from Greninja. Uh, the only thing, I, the other thing I can't take is uh, an outrage from Flygon, but I expect that thing to be defensive if, if it comes. It's a great check to my uh, Nihilego. I was gonna run Grass Knot actually on Nihilego. Uh, I didn't mention that, but that was something that I had in mind. Didn't ultimately end up running it because I didn't think that Steelix would come. But anyway, uh, Earthquake at plus one to most variants of Mega Gardevoir after rocks will kill with this investment. So I don't need to worry about running Poison Jab. This means that I have Dragon Claw and Outrage, because once the Mega Gardevoir is gone, if he doesn't bring the Steelix, his Outrage switch-ins at plus one do not exist. <laughs> they are they are completely inexistent. And I have the Lumberry. The Lumberry is not there for Outrage. It's not there so that I can... Um, so that I uh, can get rid of my Confusion, excuse me. Um, and I have a nerve, as you guys see, because Mold Breaker is not really that useful in this game. Uh, there's nothing that I don't hit with Earthquake, necessarily. Uh, his Flygon has Levitate, yes, but it gets hit super effectively with Dragon Claw anyway. Uh, so there's really nothing that I want to hit with Earthquake, uh, except for the Mega Gardevoir, the Terrakion, uh, and the Steelix, those are, and the Entei, those are the main targets for Earthquake, so I don't really need Mold Breaker, I'd much rather run a Nerve in case he decides to run a Shooka Berry on any one of those, uh, I'll be able to completely break through that. The Lumberry, I was explaining before, is not there for my Outrage Confusions, it's there so that if I get up dra a Dragon Dance, nothing can stop me outside of a Scarfer, and his um, his Thunderous Incarnate can't even Thunder Wave me because of the Lumberry. So that's that's what I'm trying to prevent is the Thunder Wave from the Thunderous Incarnate. Uh, the Prankster Thunder Wave, of course. And uh, also the speed is on here so that at plus one I can outspeed Greninja. But also at plus two I outspeed every single Scarfer on his team including a Scarfed. Uh, Terrakion, the only scar, uh, including a scarf thunderous, excuse me. The only scarfer that I do not outspeed is a Greninja at max speed, but I don't expect that thing to bring max speed against me. If it does come scarf, there's no point. So I will outspeed that as well. Uh, that's pretty much the team. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, not the team. That's pretty much the Haxorus. It's pretty straightforward. Next up, speaking of Chimpak, we mentioned him before. We have Chimpak the Infernape. I am bringing dual scarfers this game, guys, uh, because they both do very well against him. Uh, Infernimp gets me momentum into my other Scarfer or anything that I need, my defensive walls, or into my Haxorus in the late game. Uh, Flare Blitz is able to hit the Mega Gardevoir for a lot of damage as well as the Thunderous. Uh, the Delmai is for super effective, as well as the Steelix. Hits the Mesprit quite hard. Close Combat, of course, is there for the Terrakion, the Greninja, uh, the, the Steelix once again, I guess, uh, and the Lopany uh, and Entei. 
and I have uh, Mach Punch on here specifically for uh, Greninja so that it can't out prioritize me with um, Water Shuriken uh, if it comes down to it in the late game unless it's Scarfed and it's faster than me. Uh, and also for Terrakion in case that thing gets out of control. Uh, I do have a way to uh, get rid of it as, as long as I get off damage with something else on my team. Pretty much anything can damage it sufficiently uh, to put it in range. I have Dazzling Gleam on here. I have Moonblast here, Scald here, Earthquake here. I have Iron Head on my Registeel, as you guys will see in a second. Pretty much anything puts it in range of Mach Punch, so uh, that's going to be the idea. Is going to be able to uh, get the Terrakion into Mach Punch range so that it can't sweep me. Because that is a big problem if it can. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's Infernape for you. Uh, next up, we have, uh, lastly, of course, we have Sceptile MC, the Registeel. This is a very important set to me, this game, guys. Uh, his Mega Gardevoir is a huge issue. With uh, Max Spadef and a 248 HP, I am a able to uh, eat two Modest Focus Blasts so long as he doesn't get more than two mid-rolls. If he's timid, he never two-hit KOs me uh, unless rocks are up or I've taken prior damage. And he still has to hit two Focus Blasts. I have Iron Head on here specifically for the Mega Gardevoir, but it also hits the Terrakion for super effective damage, should I have to stay in on that to prevent setup. Uh, and Iron Head just hits his team decently well between Delmize, Flygon, uh, all of those things. And uh, Toxic is there for everything else. Basically, anything that's not named Steelix, I can Toxic. Once again, just like my Lotic, Stealth Rocks are here because Stealth Rocks are very important against him. As you guys can see, he has a Thunderous. That thing is a huge problem. I want to chip it down. I do have a check to it, but it is still a very big problem. Uh, his Entei is also a huge issue for me, so I want to be able to deal with that with Rocks. Uh, and Rest is there so that if the Gardevoir does uh, try to uh, dual Focus Blast me and KO me, um, if it misses the, uh, the third one, for example, and I'm not able to Oko it with, uh, with one Iron Head, uh, if I get off a Rest, he still has to hit more Focus Blasts, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's the idea behind Rest there. Also, I need Longevity on this thing, I need to keep this thing healthy. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have Sleep Talk, and I do not have a way of waking this thing up, uh, but it should be fine, I should be able to deal with that. I have 8 attack on there just in case it ends up mattering uh, with a roll on Gardevoir for whatever reason. But yeah, that's the team, guys. It's pretty straightforward. We've got uh, pretty much answers for everything. So uh, that's going to be it. Let's uh, hop into the battle and let's see how it went. All right, guys. Here we are. And uh, as you can see, he brought the Thunderous Incarnate, the Mega Gardevoir, the Terrakion, the Blastoise, as I expected, the Greninja, and the Mesprit. So right away I notice, of course, no Steelix. I did expect that. No Flygon, so HP Ice is pretty much useless on uh, Nihilego. I have Power Gem for the, uh, the Thunderous anyway, so that doesn't matter. Um, also, he did not bring the Delmize, so that means his spinner is definitely going to be Blastoise. That's kind of one of the reasons that I didn't prep too hard for Delmize in general, uh, is that I expected it not to come. I expected the Blastoise over that, uh, definitely 100%. And uh, we see no Entei, which is a huge relief, because I can't deal with that thing very well outside of my Lotic. And of course, it can still run the, uh, the Sunny Day set. If it chips away at my Milotic, that means my checks to his Greninja, to his... Uh, Terrakion are, are, are weakened essentially, so uh, that's definitely not something that I want to happen. Thankfully, Entei did not come, but this team is kind of what I expected. Pretty much everything except for Mesprit. Mesprit kind of threw me off, and I didn't really understand why it came until uh, the game actually happened. So let's take a look at the lead matchup. So <laughs> this is actually kind of funny. Uh, I decide to lead off with my Scarf Infernape. He leads off with his Greninja, and I'm thinking, okay, well, Water Shuriken doesn't Oko me unless he gets five hits. And uh, I can just U-turn out on this thing and deal a bunch of damage to it. Just go straight into my Milotic or into my Specially Defensive Registeel. Take any hit and uh, just brush it off and we'll go from there. Uh, or I can go into my Ninetales, live any hit, and then pressure him with either Moonblast or Freeze Dry. As you can see, his team does not switch into uh, Blizzard, Moonblast, or Freeze Dry very well in general. Mesprit is the only thing that really wants to take a hit. So uh, I'm thinking, okay, I'm just going to go for U-turn. It's fine. Uh, even if you water shurikens, I should be able to live. If I can prevent rocks from going up, then I should be good to go. So, I'm going to click U-turn, and he's going to U-turn too. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a Scarf Greninja, guys. And I could have died <laughs> turn one uh, to, like, a Hydro Pump. I thought about it. When, when I let off and I saw the Greninja, I'm like, this could be Scarfed. But, uh, if anything, one, he should be fearing Focus Sash. Uh, if anything, and two, he should also um, be fearing like Mach Punch, Vacuum Wave, stuff like that to weaken his Greninja, and uh, his form of uh, Wish Passing 
uh, well, he has Healing Wish with, uh, with Mesprit as well, but his form of Wish Passing is uh, Mega Gardevoir, which does not have the best HP stat in the world. Not that Greninja does either, but, you know, uh, I'm sure that he didn't want to take a hit on his Greninja, and he has a decent check to this anyway, so he's just going to click U-Turn, but U-Turn did 7%, and that's a quad-resisted attack. So right here I was questioning, well, why did that do so much? Um, I can't really figure it out, uh, but you guys are going to see later in the game. Uh, I'm going to go for U-Turn as well, and uh, he's going to bring in his Blastoise, revealing that it's Rocky Helmet, which is really good information. I'm at 77, but that's not a big deal. Uh, that's really good information. That means that it has no recovery, and uh, as I said in the team builder, Alolan Ninetales is always what I want to take advantage of uh, his Blastoise with. I want to just come in with it and force it out because of Freeze Dry. He's not a, he's not a dumb player. He knows that Freeze Dry exists on uh, on Alolan Ninetales, so he's going to want to get out of here, and uh, this is my opportunity to set up an Aurora Veil as he is going to pull out a switch into his Mega Gardevoir. Very good switch because Freeze Dry would do virtually nothing, and Mega Gardevoir can hit me for a lot of damage. But now with the Aurora Veil up, my Registeel can take hits from Gardevoir every single day, but he goes for Taunt, so that's a little bit annoying. Now what I'm gonna do, oh, sorry. Uh, let me get back to the turn real quick. Um, I'm gonna go back to normal, so. Uh, he's gonna go for a Taunt on my uh, Registeel right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to predict him to not want to stay in on an Iron Head, potentially. If he has Taunt, he's more than likely not carrying Focus Blast. Uh, he's probably like a, like a Will-O-Wisp variant. So I'm actually going to pull a double here, expecting something that can deal with my uh, Registeel, something like Blastoise. And I'm going to go into my Lodic. And he actually brings in his Mesprit, which is fine. I'm expecting Rocks on this thing. Uh, but I'm going to throw out a Toxic. I actually see that I'm faster, and I was kind of surprised. As he gets up a Light Screen, and I'm like, wait a minute. He's got dual screens on this thing. It's probably Light Clay. And it's gonna last longer than my Aurora Veil. This is not good, guys. This is this is really not good. This scared me instantly. I was like, a lot of his team is really threatening if I can't hit them hard. So I've got to find a way to deal with these screens. So I'm gonna switch out of my Milotic here now that his Mesprit is toxic. I'm gonna take this as an opportunity to get up my rocks. That's the best way I can chip away at his team. So I'm gonna do that right away. He's gonna go for the U-turn. I believe he goes into Blastoise here. Uh, to be able to split uh, spin away my rocks that he knows are going up. However, I do have Toxic on Registeel as well. This was one of the reasons, was because I can Toxic his entire team. He's going to go for Rapid Spin. I'm going to get off a of Toxic on his Blastoise, and I believe I get my rocks right back up here. I know that he doesn't have Leftovers, so this Blastoise is going to be taking a lot of damage from Toxic, and I'm going to go right for rocks again. He's going to bring in his Air Balloon, uh, Air Balloon, <laughs> a Terrakion right here. And uh, I'm going to switch out. I'm going to go into my Milotic, which, which can take a hit from this. He actually ends up going for Stealth Rocks. So this is his Rock Setter. Now they're up on both sides, and the only way they're going away on either side is if his Blastoise spins. I'm going to go for a Scald here, and I'm actually going to get a crit on this mess for it. Now, this might not look like it, um, it means a lot right here because uh, he only took 31% from it, so it's not that big a deal. But keep in mind that he's Toxic and Rocks are up. So this is actually going to play a big uh, part in the rest of the game. He's going to fall to 26. I'm going to Scald him again as uh, he's going to go for a U-turn right here. And now, Mesprit dies to the combination of rocks plus poison. So, uh, he's going to switch out into his Mega Guard. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm in with my Milotic. <clears throat> no problems. Just going to switch out into Registeel, as I believe here he goes for the Wish. Yes. Uh, he throws up a Wish, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to go for an Iron Head. If he goes into Blastoise, I'll take some Rocky Helmet damage, but I am Leftovers. I can just sit there and throw up rocks. Uh, so it's not a big deal. He does get off a taunt, and he's going to heal back up to 60%. This is really good for me. His uh, Gardevoir is switching out, and it has to come back in on rocks, and it's at 60%. So I'm going to Iron Head this Blastoise. I'm going to get a crit on that as well. This crit also matters. Uh, it did 11% to his Blastoise, and I'll explain later in the game. Uh, but he's going to take a round of Toxic right here. He's going to fall to 44 and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch out into my Alola Ninetales. I don't care if he spins because I can get the rocks back up later if I predict to switch into something like Mesprit um, or if he goes into Mega Gardevoir and I catch that or even Greninja because I'm a specially defensive Registeel so uh, I can definitely take the hit. So I'm going to go into Ninetales and he actually fires off a Scald which is perfect for me uh, because now with Hail and Toxic is Blastoise is going to fall to 26% and it cannot stay in on a Freeze Dry, which is exactly why I'm going to go for a Moon Blast. Moon Blast also killed from that range because I did find out that he was fully defensive from the damage uh, from Infernape earlier on. 
and uh, I'm gonna fire off a Moonblast, and it will easily two-hit KO this Mega Gardevoir with the Hail Up. I could have gone for Blizzard right there, but uh, Moonblast also covered the switch into uh, Terrakion quite well, not that he would ever go into that, but right here he's gonna go back into his Scarf Greninja, and I know that it's Scarfed because of turn one, so I'm actually gonna get out of here, and I am going to go into my Registeel, thinking that I can take a hit, but he ends up going for Waterfall, and I'm like, oh god, this thing is physical. It's fully physical. It's only got physical attacks. He's got U-turn. It did 7% to my Infernape, and he just did 20% to me with a Waterfall from a Greninja. So this thing has to be fully physical, meaning that it's probably carrying Ice Punch and maybe even Low Kick from my Registeel. So I have to be very careful with this thing. Uh, and he's going to uh, take some hail damage. I'm going to take the waterfall just fine. He's not going to want his Greninja to get toxic. And right here, I'm actually going to throw out a toxic. And the reason the crit from um, Milotic mattered so much earlier was because uh, if I predicted him to go into Mesprit on this turn, uh, and his Mesprit was a little bit healthier to where it could have lived the poison, then I would have been forced to go for an Iron Head to make sure that he couldn't get up screens. And if his Greninja stayed in and it waterfalled me and I went for Iron Head and did no damage to that thing, uh, then that was actually a pretty big issue. So, uh, as you guys are going to see here, his uh, Terrakion is also still on a balloon, so that's that's a problem. The thing is, the Gardevoir is dead, so realistically, even if his Greninja knocked out my Registeel, because it would have been locked into Waterfall, I could have then brought in my Haxorus, set up a Dragon Dance, as he would have switched out into something like... Uh, Mesprit or Blastoise and then just started firing off Outrages and the only thing faster than me uh, would have been his Greninja uh, which of course because of my bulk uh, you guys will see that later in the game but anyway I'm free to uh, to throw out a Toxic here uh, his Mesprit will go down anyway so that's not a problem and here he's going to take this as an opportunity to bring in his Terrakion which of course is still on a balloon and uh, he's just going to go straight for the close combat I clicked Iron Head on this turn uh, to break the balloon potentially if he wanted to set up also leaving it in range of mock punch I absolutely needed to do that if he was a rock polish variant I could have been in trouble so I'm going to go into my Lodic and as I said before guys uh, this is a max roll of 56% uh, from a non-choice banded variant which means after leftovers I'm always at least recovering what he does to me so on this next close combat I'm actually going to go for a skull just in case he wanted to switch uh, predicting another recover I didn't want him going into thunderous for free and uh, at this point, my Infernape, because it is Scarfed uh, and his, his Terrakion was Air Balloon, I could come in and revenge it with Close Combat. And at this point, he would have had no Close Combat switch-ins because his Thunderous would have taken a Scald. So I'm going to allow my Milotic to take a Scald, uh, to, uh, to take a Close Combat right there, uh, dropping it to 37%, as you guys see. And I'm also going to let it go down to this Thunderbolt. Uh, because at this point my Nihilego comes in and I'm thinking okay well I get a kill right here but the problem is uh, Nihilego is not life orb so uh, yeah about that um, Greninja is gonna take this power gem quite well I could have gone for sludge wave here but I didn't want to risk his, uh, his thunderous being like a knockoff set uh, knockoff into flash cannon or something like that living the sludge wave so right here, I'm actually going to switch out into my Haxorus because I know that he has to go for a water move to knock out my Nihilego. Ice Punch won't do the job, and U-Turn just gives me my speed boost, so he definitely doesn't want to do that. Uh, so I'm going to switch into my Haxorus, and I'm going to get up a Dragon Dance right here. And uh, his Blastoise is going to come in to be sacked. And the thing is, uh, his Blastoise would have, uh, I believe, if I didn't crit it earlier... Uh, what was it? I think that it would have been able to come in at a different time and spin away the rocks, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I, I thought the crit mattered because of, uh, of Rocky Helmet damage, but it doesn't. Uh, the crit earlier definitely doesn't matter. Uh, that one I'm wrong about, about but uh, I'm going to go for the Earthquake not to take any Rocky Helmet damage. That's actually going to come in clutch right here, as you guys are going to see. Greninja is going to come back in at 3%. It's going to go for the Ice Punch and does 47% to my Haxorus. I'm going to go for a Dragon Claw, obviously knock out this Greninja. Uh, and I wasn't even worried about a Freeze because the only way at this point that Moxie could win was uh, to freeze my Haxorus, pop my Lumberry, go into Thunderous, Thunder Wave me, full para me on that turn, knock me out, and then full para both of my Scarfers with Thunder Wave as well. Uh, and also my Nihilego. Everything that I had remaining on the team could knock out his Thunderous from where it was at. It was at 50%. 
Flare Blitz from Infernape, Power Gem from Nihilego, uh, as well as a Blizzard or even Freeze Dry, uh, maybe even Moonblast from uh, Alola Ninetales. So I am going to knock out this Greninja with a Dragon Claw, and uh, he's going to bring in this Thunderous. He's not even going to click Thunder Wave, so Haxorus is going to pick up the final kill. His Thunderous was also not Scarfed, so that means we outsped it. And uh, Haxorus picking up three kills, A-Drive doing some work this week, and we get a 4-0 win, and this is quite important. If you guys remember, in the announcement video, I did say that uh, the way the PCL works is that if you get a 3-0 win or better, you get three points and your opponent gets zero. So I definitely want to take advantage as much as possible of big wins like this. Uh, big shout-outs to... Um, to Blake, guys, go check him out in the description. My opponent, Moxie Infernape. Uh, if you want to go see his side, he's got great commentary. He's a great guy. Uh, he's really nice. And, uh, yeah, no, I think we did a great job uh, with this team. Specifically, this Haxorus put in a ton of work at the end. I uh, was able to uh, keep my walls until I didn't need them anymore, which is really nice. My walls were able to wear down his walls with Toxic, uh, such as his Mesprit and his Blastoise. And uh, his Mega Gardevoir uh, eventually just dropped to my Alolan Ninetales, which is kind of what I intended, uh, was to weaken the Gardevoir to the point where it couldn't switch into either one of my Scarfers anymore. So yeah, that worked out perfectly. I think we uh, we did a good job this first week. Like I said, my uh, my Mons aren't nicknamed, unfortunately, uh, this week because I thought of the nicknames after. You guys will see them next week, though. Uh, next week, we are taking on the Commissioner of the League, uh, Nick Mighty Mamoswine the person who invited us to this league in the first place. So, uh, that should be interesting. He's got a really, a really disgusting team with Jirachi, Mega Venusaur, Togekiss. Yeah, just those three months, uh, piss the hell out of me. Uh, piss me off quite a bit. Uh, and I don't want to deal with them. He's also got a Z Guard Chomp and stuff, so uh, definitely not looking forward to that team. But you guys will see the team builder uh, next week. Anyway, your Montreal Half Souls are now 1 0 in the PCL. We started off strong uh, with three points as well, so this is really nice. Uh, also, differential does come into play if uh, two players end up having the same points, so. Uh, yes, plus four uh, does matter, so I'm really happy to come out of this with a plus four instead of a plus three. Uh, really glad that Haxorus was able to live the Ice Punch, and uh, yeah, that seals it up, guys. Uh, if you did enjoy, uh, make sure to leave a like down below. Again, go check out my opponent as well as every other coach in the PCL in the description down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao!